For years, a South Pasadena figure model suffered with a strange array, array of symptoms, and when it became more than she could take, she decided to give her breast implants removed. Well, what happened next? CBS 2's Jasmine Beal has a story you'll only see on CBS 2. I always felt like I needed to strive for perfection. I will be very transparent with you. My mom wasn't the kind of mom that was like, you need to go to college. It was, you better get ready. We're going to go into modeling. But the type of modeling Ashley Grichia Pasadena was pursuing was more suggestive than sophisticated. She knew she needed to look the part. So I, I decided to get my first pair of breast implants in 2004. With her added curves, I really felt like I looked like mom. It definitely helped my confidence. Ashley's mom was quite a celebrity in her day. A Playboy Playmate centerfold, Miss February 1969. Following in those high heeled footsteps, I was in swimsuits a lot. And even hung out with Hef at the Playboy Mansion. It was a lot of fun. An experience that I, I can't put into words. For years, Ashley enjoyed plenty of modeling assignments. But along the way, I started having strange things happen to me. Then she says, I was getting ripples. So Ashley had her saline implants replaced with silicone implants in 2011. Meanwhile, her health continued to slowly decline. I started having major colds, major flus, strep throat. Her mental health was also plummeting. After a mammogram in September of 2018, I was never the same. Daughter Ariana, 16, remembers watching her mom fall apart. Ariana, I need you to put my shoes on for me. I need you to take my shoes off for me. I need you to wash my arms for me. Right around that time, I fell to my knees. I said to the Lord, please tell me what's wrong. And like a light, like, like a light bulb from God, boom, breast implants. Ashley searched breast implant illness online. And within minutes, I came across a page that saved my life. A Facebook group called Breast Implant Illness and Healing by Nicole. More than 70,000 women have joined, all reporting their own mysterious symptoms. It was as if there were 77,000 Ashleys. All fighting, she says, the same conventional wisdom. Breast implant illness doesn't exist. So if it doesn't exist, then it's all in our heads. And if it's all in our heads, then who's going to help us pay for it? In January, Ashley gathered the money to have her implants removed. And now I have no aches and pains. I have never, ever felt better. W2 fluffy face. It's just a dramatic difference. Ashley considers herself a breast implant victim. In March, she joined 70 other women on a trip to the FDA. Among the group's demands require implant makers to do long term health studies publish a list of ingredients for each implant they make, ban textured implants linked to lymphoma, provide all women contemplating implants a booklet detailing the risk written by women who say they've been harmed. I want women to know that you're not crazy and I want you to know that you're not alone. Ashley knows her experience is merely an anecdote, that it doesn't prove her implants caused her illness. So now she hopes to have them analyzed. If her DNA is found inside them, she believes it might prove chemicals in the implants leaked into her. Despite all that she's endured, Ashley doesn't completely regret her implant journey. They helped with her career, and for several years, I was fine, until I wasn't. Jasmine Veal, CBS 2 News. Now, the FDA announced last month that it does not have definitive evidence that implants cause the illnesses reported by women like Ashley. But the evidence does support that some women experience systemic symptoms that may resolve when their implants are removed.